Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I want to discuss a topic that comes up quite frequently when people are getting involved with robotics for production that do not understand the cost of custom-made cables. Now, in this particular instance, <clears throat> here's a client's custom-made H17HY spindle cable. Now, he sent me the connector, and I will request that to be done on these type of cables uh, because these connectors I typically do not have in stock. He went with my DS Flexion, which is a 10 million flex cycle ultra flex cable that carries a 2.9 inch bend radius. That means the maximum you can bend this cable is 2.9 inches, which is nothing. I mean, it's super, super flexible. When I covered the price with him, he was adamant about having it done and he was very happy to have it done professionally. Um, what I want to do is make sure that the client gets exactly what he ordered in a professional cable that once again is extremely safe and will give him the longevity and durability he's looking for for his robot. Now that being said, if you come to me and you expect to have a cable built like this, and I'm going to show you the internal structure of how I soldered this later in the video, and you say to me, and I'm going to show you the other side with the ring connectors installed, okay, here we go. You see the ring connectors. And again, the ground is, of course, with the uh, two leads, the yellow and the green. The green is the shield drain, and that goes to the VFD. If you come to me and you want a custom cable bill with the DS Flexion or any of my other of my cables, keep in mind, you have to pay for my knowledge, my tools, the shipping, the insurance, the liability, and when you're asking me to do it most of all, you're paying for my time, okay? And when I say my tools, everything you see here, you can see right here, was used to create these kind of cables, okay? I've gotten told before <clears throat> my work desk looks similar to a doctor's layout. Well, I do that for a reason because that is what I use. My deoxit, each one of these bottles is between nine and $12 a piece. You can look them up online if you don't believe me. Sovereign Flux, Kester products all the way across, Kester 186, Kester number 44 solder. I had to build these cables, and I've said this in previous videos, all of my components are built to my spec as what I would do for my own systems. Most of my clients know this, okay? They can recognize that quality of work, and then they come to me and say, I want to have it done. When you see the picture in this video, after we go over to it, for this cable, you will see why I charge what I do because you haven't seen the internal structure of this cable. Okay, guys, I just wanted to clarify something. This is the H17 connector. You can see that here. You can see the connections are all done. This cable is just going to be closed up. Um, I'm going to cut over to a picture that was sent to me. And this person explained to me they didn't understand why I charge what I do. And if you look at this picture of what they sent me and you see this, I think now we can determine why I charge what I do. This, take, this has taken me years to get this good. And again, I, I let the work reflect what I know. And you can see exactly what we've got here. We've got no overflow. Everything is set. Ground is set on the bottom. All your shield is removed. Everything here is nice and clean. And everything, of course, as far as the shield, uh, both shields, the drain, or excuse me, the drain, the foil, and the tin braided copper are all uh, beneath the casing as they should be. And you can see the finished 817. I'll show you the cable when it's completed. But once again, talk is cheap. When you see the work done and you can do this and do it repeatedly, I feel then you've earned what you've asked. And you can see exactly what we've got here. Okay. You've seen the finished structure. But keep that in mind when you ask for a custom-built product on anybody's account, depending upon what they do. Okay, what problem are they solving? This cable in the right hands on the right robot, once again, using, uh, or I should say being used by the proper end user, will make a fortune if it's done properly. I don't care if you're using your robot for hobby use because that is your preference. I don't build cables like this in terms of hobby use. I build them in terms of safety. These are three-phase spindle cables, okay? So, again, 
I've been told many times, well, the cable should be about $20 or $30. If you feel this kind of cable is $20 or $30, I suggest you do your due diligence and go and look and see what the prices of Ultraflex cable is. Or for that matter, any spindle cable. All the spindle cables in my store, I put together in packages so you don't have to buy all the accessories that you will require for your system. And make no mistake about it, all of those accessories are required to do a professional job like this. Double wall heat shrink, internally bonded with uh, adhesive, that when the heat actually shrinks the um, heat shrink, it actually bonds with an internal glue right to where it is so it does not move. And using double wall heat shrinks makes this very, very, very strong. Okay, it turns more to a plastic. And you can see how everything is done here. You will notice that this is the connector that was made using my new master rotary tool. What's going to be interesting is to see a 3.7 volt lithium ion power will actually remove this material. I think we're going to have no problem doing it. Again, I stay at a very low RPM with the Dremel technically. I stay at between uh, 10 to 12,000 and this will easily do that. So one thing like I said I noticed is how smooth this is. It's just amazing. It doesn't even feel like it's on. It's very, very quiet. So I'm going to go to in between RPM, I've got my PPPE in, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll see if we can just take out some material real quick. Come back over here. And you can see plenty of power here. And I'm just feathering out. Take out those groove marks. We're just going to come down as much as we can, and I'm not putting a lot of pressure. Why I like going this RPM, guys, is I can control the depth real easy. You see how careful I am? I'm moving real slow. That's it. Oh, yeah, we're getting it real nice. You can see all the material removed. Do a little bit more feathering. I'm going to come in real close. Keep my hands pretty relaxed. you could see all that texture is virtually gone and now we're ready for sanding now what I want to do is see if we can have enough torque to open up right here you could see all this interior metal all of this has got to be removed so let's just see if we have enough power because I think this thing will easily do this very easy And again, I'm staying at a lower RPM, and you can see it's already cutting through real nice. Now, if I go to the higher RPM, I'm going to have a much faster cut. So I'd like to be careful with that. Again, depending upon how well you guys are trained. Oh, yeah, it's cutting like butter now. So you really want to be careful, because the faster you go, the faster you're going to cut. And if you've never done this before, one mistake, then you're basically SOL. What we do is we feather this connector out. You can see how much I've removed already. It's just coming right down. And this is so easy to hold, it's so light. Very little resistance. You let the tool do the work.
And when I get asked, why do you, why does this cable cost so much, the 817? Now you know why. You can see we're getting there now. You can see just how nice. It's almost done. And uh, we'll cover this in more detail as I get done, but without a doubt, tons of power to do this job. Uh, what I might do now is just do uh, a quick end mill change and then we'll go back into using it as a sanding uh, drum to actually round out, smooth out the base of the connector. Turn this on again, come over here and do it. Light pressure, and that's the big thing when you're sanding, I see a lot of guys using heavy, heavy hands. That's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to use the tool to do the job. So you just press just enough. And what we're doing is just rounding this out. We don't want to go too high in RPM. I'm probably at right now, I believe, 10,000. And I'm just going in and out. I'm just boring it out, basically. And you can see we're getting it nice and smooth. You can see how it's starting to come out. that's what we're looking for is it comes in more like that and the beauty of this is with that low RPM you're really not going to feather it too much you can do this just right get that finished just where we want it we don't remove too much material because we still want this stress relief to be in position so that we can naturally insert our cable and that looks fantastic you can see just how smooth that came out and how close to proximity we are actually to the hole placement. I'm just basically kissing it. I'm not doing much at all right here. There we go. Let that tool do the work and just keep stroking it right inside there. You go. That came out beautiful. You can see just how smooth. And again, all of these tools are used, including right down to the final detail of applying the proper thread lock to the screws. The details that most people miss, I don't miss. And the reason I don't miss it is because, once again, quality is everything. So if you want it done right, then you have to applicate a price to it. If you're not going to do that, then you're going to have a problem. Now, when you see the picture, and I'll say it again, in this video, of a prior spindle cable that was assembled, you were going to have that WTF moment. And I know I did, and I see this all the time. So when you come to me and you say, well, what's, you know, what's the price of such and such cable to be built? Expect a price that is going to be comparable to the problem being solved, okay? This is not easy work. If it was, you would see a lot more guys doing it. Do a search online and find out how much it costs for a custom cable to be built. And you can do that on numerous sites and you will find out. All of the cables I supply are professional grade. These cables actually have, this is my own design cable, it says E-Dealers Direct right on it. You've got all of the specs on here. And these are all internally coppered leads. I get that question a lot. You can check the feedback on eBay. Um, you can see the history. There is a, a, an extensive history of these products. Now, when you understand that, then the amount makes sense. If you don't understand what you're purchasing, I will send you this video, and that's why I'm creating it, so you can do your own research and see exactly what you're looking at. Okay? These cables are not cheap, and they're not cheap for a reason, because they are designed to power your cutting tool on your robot, which in essence, without this cable, makes your robot a paperweight. So, I mean, really, moving the axis means nothing if you can't cut anything. So, realistically, that is what you're asking for, and by all means, if you at all feel that you can build a cable sufficiently for yourself, for whatever quality spec you're okay with, and you're okay with the safety spec, go with it. 
But I'm telling you now, and I've had it happen with previous clients, if God forbid you burn anything down and you plan on doing an insurance claim, which 99.9% .9 of us will do that have the ability to do that, you're going to find that you will be investigated. The fire marshal will come in. They will investigate what exactly caused the fire. If it's due to any cables, you can rest assured. If you tell them or they find out that you built it and it's built incorrectly, you will not be paid. And I'm telling you this right now. So do your own research. Be careful. And again, I let the work speak for me. I'm not giving you a resume and paper. It means nothing. I'm not telling you. I'm not bragging. I'm not doing anything. If you can't read and see what's right there in front of you, not just in videos, not just in eBay feedback, I don't know what else to do. The only thing else to do is to buy the cable yourself and test it. I've had clients do that as well. They buy the cables and then they try to assemble and I'll get contacted weeks after, hey, I can't do this. I didn't realize this was this difficult. Or I, I thought I could solder. I haven't soldered in a while. And it turned out to be much more of a project. I'm not kidding you. This happens. And then either I have to fix their work or then I'm starting over. And usually they've already cut the cable. And sometimes it's too short. Then they have to rebuy the cable because we can't naturally attach cable that's been cut. So do your due diligence. Think about what I'm saying in this video. And again, take your time, make the right choice. Thank you all for your support.